you are. Good morning, fellas. Good morning, Mark. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Can we come and have a quick chat with you? Is that right? That's kill me, cats. <laughs> they just woke up. <laughs> Can we come and have a chat with you? Is that right? Yeah, sure. That's no problem. Nice one. <laughs> just in cameras, Babbo. <laughs> <laughs> That's cats. <laughs> cats killed her. <laughs> How are you feeling, fellas? Yeah, not too bad. Well, a little, little bit tired now. I just, I just woke up. <laughs> okay, it's, it's match day. Can we, first of all, how, how did you sleep last night? Tell us how you, how you uh, sleep. I slept like a baby last night. I was knackered. Watch match of the day, and then I watched football league show, and then I slept like a baby after. This is something special for you guys, but what's the feeling been like amongst uh, the community? Well, it's, it's, been, it's been really good. It's been, it's been brilliant. Like, every, everyone's enjoying themselves. Everyone's excited. And we're just looking forward to it, really. A little bit nervous, but yeah, it's going to be a good day, I think. I think we can get the win as well, to be honest. Hopefully. Yeah, should be a good day. How did you sleep last night? I slept like a baby. We've all been knackered. We've been travelling a lot. So yeah, I was watch match of the day, a little bit of football league and that was it, I was gone. I'm excited now, but I'm just, just trying to hide it. And then as the day's as the day's gradually gonna get further on, I think it's gonna get it's gonna build up and then as soon as I get on the pitch then it's then I'll just change. And it's just then I'll just concentrate on the game and then I'll just blank it all out. We know that the team hasn't even been announced yet. You've got a team meeting at 10.30 mm, this morning. That's right, yeah. Um, does that, for you guys, that's a little bit different as well, a different way of doing things. How, do, how has that changed the day for uh, you? It's, it's different, but it keeps keeps everyone interested and obviously no one knows what's going on. <laughs> Well, we're we're renowned at Gosport to uh, to make sure that things never run smoothly. Um, there's there's a few of us that have to do some of the work, and uh, our our partners in uh, the charity partners Wessex Heartbeat uh, very kindly supplied us with uh, 30 trading tops t-shirts uh, which at this moment in time with a few hours to go to kick off are in the clubhouse in Gosport um, however I thought it was the best place for them to be otherwise they may have got stolen or mis mis misplaced down here so uh, a very good colleague of mine is ensuring that they're in a car on the way here and will be up here by one o'clock <laughs> ready for them to train at ten past two. <laughs> is that chairman speak for it? It's a cock up? It's a massive balls up, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a long build up, you know, ever since we beat Haven in the semi final. And now I think everyone's just looking forward to it now. Like one of those really don't suffer with anxiety or, or nerves. You know, we'd love our pre match um, routine, we've all got that. And, you know, I should go back in a minute and uh, shave the old beard off and, and then get ready for the team meeting and in, into your suit. And the time soon passes, and the next meeting you're on the coach at Wembley. Um, and tell us when you think they're a bit different today, team selection wise, you've got a team meeting at half ten. Is, is there a reason why you've left it a bit late? You normally do it a little bit earlier every day. I think it's, I think it's important when you come away for three days that um, you, know, you keep everybody involved and uh, it's a decision that won't be made lightly. You know, you've got to go into every eventuality. You know, we've got to read the reports and see the DVDs on Cambridge and prepare properly and pick the team that um, we feel on the day is going to beat them. You know, and uh, that's what we've done. And how has the preparation worked when you've had you know, three, four days together, which is not normal for a non-league side, but how has that helped to, to gel the, the squad? Well, if it doesn't, it never will. You know, it's, um, we, we've had some good times together, we, and uh, quite frankly, we've had some bad times as well that need to sort it out on Thursday night, but uh, I'm sure they're pounding to insignificance uh, when they've won the trophy. Yeah, up there. Right up there, to be fair. Um, done a few things. Played against Barcelona, played against Chelsea, big games like that. They're all just friendlies. This has got a lot riding on it, and there's a, there's a lot of fans there. I played in testimonials with, in front of a lot of people. But, you know, nothing again with so much riding that's, you know, so much at stake. So, yeah, it's up there.
a bit of a mixture really excited nervous you know we've been waiting for this moment for for weeks it seems now so and it's finally here so you know just like I say had breakfast everyone seems quite calm and relaxed to be fair so uh, I've got a team meeting in a minute um, fate is in the manager's hands at the moment of who's playing who's in the squad so I think once we know that news um, people can start preparing properly for what role they've got to take. Gareth is that, is that got the first challenge today that the team meets? Oh definitely so yeah I think people now are keen to know what the final squad is really just to get their heads around it and you know finally get on it. Massive for the town isn't it I mean how many clubs get to go to Wembley and it's just it's unreal really I think, you know, players fans alike it's just it is the dream and it's living the dream really so you're all non uh, full-time pros um t t what do you do away from this what's your job and your life away from here uh, i work at a secondary school called mount batten which is in romsey and um, we coordinate a couple of youth pro programs within the county uh, so my role is tying all these projects together cabinet maker um for a boat building company in uh, marchwood and swampton so um completely different really yeah sort of hands-on practical job and yeah, just two different jobs really. Uh, and just, I just want to ask about the team meeting. Four players sadly won't be making it today. Um, tell us about the pressure. We came on the Thursday and everyone wanted that meeting to happen on the Friday. Didn't and it got put off to Saturday and it got put off again to today. So the tension's definitely there within the camp. Um, you know, whoever's four names miss out on the squad completely. You know, it's going to be, you know, it could be us two stood here and we could be absolutely Sorry. devastated. Um, so in a way, you've got to feel for the manager and, and Cats because they've got to make this decision now and, you know, it's, it's going to break people's hearts, really. Yeah. Um, probably a three-day period where we've been mulling over the side, watching training. Um, we sort of left each other alone for a while uh, to sort of think out our own thoughts on what we thought the team would be and then we came together on Friday and surprisingly matched up uh, bar one or two positions really slept on that overnight and then made the final decision yesterday after dinner so now it's a case of letting the players know and it's probably the worst bit of the whole journey really yeah it's uh, how hard is that going to be for you because i mean these, these are players that you see week in week out some yeah. have done a good job for you all season and there's going to be broken hearts. Tell us how hard that is. It's going to be the most difficult thing I've ever had to do in football, really. Uh, I was listening to your interviews in the dining room and you're talking to players that, that won't be involved on the day. Um, and, you know, it's going to be the, the hardest thing I've ever had to do, really. Um, but it's part and parcel of football and they have to accept that. And that's why we're doing it yeah. today. Give them time to get over it and hopefully enjoy the rest of the day for what it is. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> gets left with me then, doesn't it? So, can't be bad. That's why you get paid the big bucks, eh? I wish it was. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> you just had team selection. Um, firstly, give us your emotions after that's just taken place. How are you feeling? I think any manager would say it's the most difficult thing in football for a manager to drop players, and especially when you're playing a game at Wembley in a final of that magnitude, it makes it even more difficult. It just accentuates the, the emotions, not only in me, but also the players. You know, you'd, uh, you're looking around the room and you've got 11 happy eyes, you've got five that uh, uh, mixed emotions because they're on the bench, and then you've got four that uh, feel like laser beams in, the, in, in your head. But you know, there can't be any room for sentiment in football, and I'm sure you know, it was time time's a great eater that you know they would go back and they would think they have been part of it and they are part of my squad and I value them as players but um, we can only have 16 unfortunately. Can you run through your starting 11 then? 
Yeah, we started to go. We play our four four one one, and um, Nathan Ashford will be in goal. Lee Molyneux will be at right back, left back will be Andy Forbes. Two centre backs will be Sam Pearce and Brett Pope. Two midfielders will be uh, Danny Smith and Jamie Brown. On the right hand side will be Josh Carmichael. Left hand side Mike Gosney, and up front will be Tim Seals and Justin Bennett. And on the bench. That leaves Rory Williams. That was, you know, that was a tough decision, you know, because Rory's in form. But Justin Bennett's come back and and scored goals. And you know, we, we have to look at the opposition and and, and look at them as well. You know, they're going to be a danger in both boxes with their height. You know, and, and Benno is a better header of the ball and will give us something in our box. So Rory was relegated to the bench. The other one was unlucky was Ryan Scott. You know, he was up against probably Jamie Brown. But, you know, Jamie is the, the club skipper and done exceedingly well, but Ryan came in and did brilliantly in the two semi-finals against Havant and maybe deserved a start, but it, um, he'd be on the bench alongside um, Adam Wilde, Dan Wooden and Dan Woodwood, so I've just decided to go with five outfield players and I've gambled by not taking an outfield goalkeeper. Well, from a personal point of view, we're obviously relieved and excited now, you know, you know that you're starting the game. You know, we've had 23 players wanting to hear your name being called out from the 11, uh, but hearing your name, you know, the emotion now is it's excitement and ready to go. How much has that been on your mind, the actual selection? Is it? Well, since we got through, you know, the, the target for every player was to get in the starting lineup. Um, we've had seven or eight league fixtures since then, and we've had a bit of rotation with the squad. And every lad who's who's come in has, has performed, and we've picked up some great results in the league. And everyone's been fighting for their place. So, you know, to have that name called out is you know is, is what we all wanted and that moment that you heard your <clears> name <throat> yeah because um, uh, your name was halfway pretty much yeah. at the back end of the list I mean, yeah. yeah well you know what order you're in you know when what yeah. positions come in so you, you hear your name and inside it's a nice smile um, and then you just switch off I think I didn't really catch the rest of the side and who was on the bench and uh, who unfortunately was left out of the squad until later on but you know, your name's called out it's you know it's, it's a big grin inside yeah. We spoke to you with Gareth a little bit yeah. earlier. Clearly, yeah. he, he hasn't been selected. Yeah, no, the, that's, the, tell us. I mean, he, he's that's, yeah, he, you know, he's, he's my roomie. I, I've known him for a few years. You know, we travel up together. We live, you know, we're socially mixed with each other. And for me to walk back to the room with him, you know, it's hard. You know, I feel for him, and you know, we probably knew he wasn't going to start with Ash more in goal, but not having to keep on the bench is, is a tough call for the manager so yeah he's he's gutted to see a few of the boys faces that they're not in the team or not in the squad you know it's a bit disheartening but that's the way it is football we've got a big squad and fortunately you had to leave a few people that flares out and, and when you found out that your name that you were selected to tell us about your emotions there yeah i'm just glad really i sort of had a good idea that i'll be playing anyway but yeah i'm just you know glad i'll be playing now i'll be playing at wembley can you focus now on the job in hand as opposed to because this was not the first hurdle today, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, everyone we've been wanting to have this meeting for about three days, but I thought she's done it this morning. But that's it. Um, so now, yeah, so we look forward to it. We've had a little write up on them, so we can read through that. Um, but as long as we give a good account for ourselves, you know, that's the main thing. As long as we give them a good game, and we don't go two or three down early doors, you know, and then we'll be chasing shadows for the rest of the afternoon. But now, as long as we keep it tight at the back. Uh, at least for a good half hour, you know, and we'll give it a good go and see what from there. It's weird, I had a shower earlier and just sort of drying off, just sat in the bathroom, kind of realised that lifelong dream is about to uh, become reality, so uh, it's going to be weird.
1946 I first went there and that was the first year we were in the Hampshire League and my father used to take me every week. I can't really describe it, it's unbelievable. I never thought the day would come that we'd ever be at Wembley and regardless of the result today, I'm just so proud to be here, really. You know, I think the same goes for the rest of us as well. It's about us when we get the ball today. If we give it away cheap, we're being put up to our canoe. When we get it, we keep possession, pass it, I get it into Sills here as the focal point and then we work on the in and around him, okay? Benno, you've got to get round him. If Sills is a bit high up on the edge of the box, you've got to work around the front of him. And again, if he drops in, you've got to get him behind and get him in channels, okay? So you've got a lot of fucking work to do up there. But all the best, lads, give it your best shot, okay? Cambridge United get this one away and it's headed out of play out for halfway and Cambridge have a throw in over on the far side long ball forward now though now though got Border in trouble because that's Border defending the finish goes and it's a great save from Ashmore who comes out of a 6 yard box the way he's stepping it up he's laid back and he is going to shoot and it's a weak shot but it's outside the 6 yard box the shot comes in just over the crossbar and out for a goal kick to the left but good play from Gosport there best chance of the game so far still 0-0 this is where you can understand the way the game is going free kick over on the far side swinging from Pierce for Gosport headed on from Forbes outside second the 6 phase. yard box again second phase away it a goes. great ball and again another good ball but Gosport just can't try and can't quite get control of this one Cambridge headed away, not once but twice. Inside now towards Gosney, the shot comes in, saved by the goalkeeper, dives down to his left. He was brown this time, but again, good attacking from Gosport, and they seem to be getting more and more into the game as it goes on. Yeah, this will be the best opportunity since Ryan Bird's one-on-one, -on -one, I would imagine, from here. This is just outside the, uh, the D on the edge of the box. It's just the perfect distance to get it up and over. So stand strong if you're in that wall. Make sure you do your job and let the keeper do his. Danger for Gosport Bunner on 37 minutes. It's Cambridge with a free kick on the edge of the D. Here we go, it's teed up. It's hit the base of the wall and it's away and the volley's also hit the wall. So good defending from Gosport. A worrying moment, but it passed without trouble. Yeah, I mean, nobody jumped, which was good. You stand there because often, how many times we see walls jump and the ball goes under and, and, and through. So they stood firm and uh, saw actually the... Wonderful pass through, it's an opportunity, it's a lob, it's a goal, and it's Ryan Bird who scored in the 38th minute. Gosport doing so well, but with about seven minutes to half-time, they've fallen behind. Goal for Cambridge. 
Well, they've just switched off there, so I'm thinking that they think they've cleared the ball. They haven't. The ball gets played back in again. Little flick, and Ryan Bird, last man, plays on the last man. I'd like to see if he was offside or not. We won't get a replay. played inside the penalty area and it's a long ball and his shot comes in from outside the six yard box and the Gosport defence fell asleep outside the six yard box it was played long the shot came in with the left foot and it was Gillies who finds the back of the net and their lead extends it's Cambridge 2 Gosport Borough nil. now then a run forward there from Gillies. He's got two or three players inside the penalty area. He's got one back in Donaldson who he finds. Tries to cut inside. Good play there near the six-yard box. He's got Molyneux marking him closely. Plays it back. Still there, good defending from Gosport, who are just forcing Cambridge back. But a little through ball, it comes, and a shot comes in. It's the post, and it could go anywhere. It's still being scrambled away from Gosport. Again, the shot comes in. Eventually, it's made out. And eventually, it goes into the back of the net. And this time, it's Donaldson with his second. And Cambridge have their third. And that, I think, is game set a match. Cambridge United 3, Gosport Borough 0. From the left-hand side, chipped in, tries to find Bennett outside the six-yard box. Head tennis going on now for the time being. First inside the penalty, then outside. Gosney shoots straight at the goalkeeper, dives to his left. That's another big opportunity for Gosport and for Gosney. Gosport have got two things to things to do. They've got to obviously keep this. The shooting chart. Oh. Oh, so so close from Justin Bennett from the edge of the box he turned so well and the shot looked good too but it just drifted and Cambridge broke Eastley Hearts in the quarter-finals with a narrow 1-0 win at the Silver Lake they're breaking Gosport Hearts here today they're going forward here it's a good cross into the middle oh, it's not going to be an own goal surely it's a penalty it's a, it's a penalty, it's a penalty. Oh, dear. Yeah. Nathan Ashmore in goal can he stop it Tate steps up it's a great penalty into the left-hand corner Ashmore died the opposite way. They're enjoying the occasion, but not the scoreline. Gosport nil, Cambridge four. Well, and there to have a go. Dan Woodward floated it into the box. Goalkeeper comes out and punches it. Maybe that turns out to be the right decision because it doesn't fall to Gosport, but it's spread wide to Woodward. I think he's going to get another chance to shoot or cross. It's a long way shot oh. off the crossbar. Goodness me. He thought about the cross. I don't know if it was a cross shot, Steve, if he meant that, but that curled and hit the crossbar. Yeah, I think exactly what it was. It was a cross shot. Come on, Gosport, get yourself a consolation. Rory Williams running forward. It's four against four. It's a good pass into the box. Oh, it just goes oh. too far. 
Number 10, Bennett. Oh, gosh, there were two plays he could have put it back to, and he's put it back to nobody. And we're just uh, seeing out the game, and I think Cambridge are going to let the, the ball go out of play. They were looking... What's the final whistle? The final whistle has sounded. Gosport have had a day out. They'll never forget in the sunshine the FA Trophy final. They were in the game for so long, but in the end, they conceded that first half goal and three in the second half. They've lost by four goals to nil. Ryan Bird, the Pompey player on 38, then two from Ryan Donaldson uh, on 50 and 60, and that killed the game. Then they had a penalty with 12 to go, which Luke Berry converted. Oh, nothing but praise. Um and admiration for what they've achieved. It's not today. This wasn't what um, defined their, their cup run. It was what was gone on previously. And as I say, the utmost respect and admiration for what they've achieved. Yeah, it's a tough game. They're obviously, uh, you know, a class act. Um, you know, I thought... It was, it was a bit tough. The first goal was a bit tough because I thought he was offside. I don't know what you know what, it, what it's like out in the stand, but I thought it was a couple of yards offside, and it was a key moment in the game, really. I think once they uh, they get their nose in front, they're hard to beat, to be honest. And, and you know, and I think fitness, and we were we were going a bit gung ho at the end, and uh, yeah, but you know, it was, a, it, it was a good it was a good effort to make it in the first place. So uh, the boys got the boys should be proud of themselves. So Trying to, try to hold back the tears, I'm honest. We were always up against it, and I think as soon as that goal went in, it was kind of, hey, we plugged away, but we were just only getting the odd half chance, and it was always going to be difficult to get back in the game. So people said before, you don't want to lose at Wembley, and I believe that now. Um, just get, you know, see them come down and that trophy now. It's, yeah, they deserve it, but just it would have been nice for us to do that. <laughs> oh, I think that's probably why I'm feeling so tearful now. You know, look at them, they empty the stadium now, but earlier there's thousands of them. And, to have support like that on a day like today just means the world and it's making the emotions even worse. Well done, mate. Well Cheers. Done. Fitness, ability, you know, they're, they're professional footballers. We're, we're semi-professional footballers. We know uh, we had to be at the top of our game today and they had to have an off day for us to get a result and they didn't have an off day basically, they were at the top of their game and so we struggled to live with that at times but say so we you know, we'd take credit from getting this far, the fans were fantastic, supporters everywhere. I don't think it will sink in for a few days yet, what, you know, how much of an achievement it is but at the moment it's just disappointing because we've lost a game of football and that feels bad. 
you know, wherever you're playing or whatever the uh, occasion. But I think when it all settles down, everyone will be proud of the achievements to get this far and, uh, you know, it go down in history, really. What do you think will be the one memory when you're driving back in your car to go sport? What's the, the memory that will stay with you? Um, probably getting the picture with Justin Bennett down here. Well, that's well about a disappointment. You know, I, th I think um, when you've been to Wembley and won, and then you've come to Wembley and lose, you know, you, you know how to treat both those imposters, but I still can't get over the defeat. You know, it's it's hard to take and I feel sorry for the players, their families and the fans that have come to watch. Cambridge are a team that are aspiring to get into the Football League and Gosport aspiring to be where Cambridge are. You know, and that, that, that is about the summit where both clubs are at this present moment in time. When you enter this competition, if you're going to lose, then lose at Wembley because it's given us a fantastic experience. The three days away, as uh, we already had a good team spirit, but it's been galvanised because of that. And it's up to me now to tap into that and use it and use it in our league campaign to get us out of the trouble that we're in. I just think they had that little bit of quality in the final third. I think, um, and they had a little bit rubber the green in and around the box in the second half, uh, which we didn't have. And uh, it's just a shame we just wanted one of the boys to score just to give the fans something to cheer about. We're very grateful for everyone that's come today, and, it's, and especially the whole way through. But um, at the end of the day, we're here to win a cup final, you know. Pride, damaged, deflated very low um, and I feel a bit of a letdown to be fair. It's hard at the minute because it, I still, like Saturday now, it still doesn't feel like we, we've just played at Wembley, it just feels like another game disappointed of not winning. So I mean maybe next couple of days it is sinking that and I'll enjoy it more. And I, I think the, one of the hardest things for me today is not just losing how we lost or you know losing the trophy finals but it's seeing what it means to the lads, you know, because um, we're such a tight unit to see some of the lads' emotions and stuff like that. It's, it, you know, it, it cuts you deep and stuff because you don't want your friends to be hurting, mm. um, especially being one of the older players. You, you know, it's good to see. It's good to show how much it means to them. So, but it hurts, nevertheless. I just can't believe we've, we've played at Wembley. And it's amazing that we've played there, but it's, it's still gutting that we've just lost. Almost cried at the end, but the last, the last five minutes, I just looked around and just took it all in. To be fair, it was because it was an amazing ground. There was I don't know how many people there was, but the, both sets of fans were were amazing, and to play in that sort of a game it was was just fantastic. The captain. Spirit in this squad is just second to none. It's, we're all good friends as well. Um, and it's just a really good laugh. And I love, love coming to play football for this club. And I love playing with the lads as well.
Let's raise it up. Let's raise it up.